Hello and welcome once again to Kitchen Corrections. Um, guys, uh, it, it, uh, yeah, you're actually supposed to do is. Uh, uh, actually, uh, that's not how you are uh, supposed to do it. It's a segment on the show where I go after prominent YouTube chefs and correct any little oopsies they might have made. So, what will I be correcting? The Philly cheesesteak. But who got it wrong? Everybody on YouTube! But for simplicity's sake, let's focus in on not another cooking show. So, why is everyone on YouTube wrong? Well, as we hopefully should know, a Philly cheesesteak is made with thinly sliced ribeye. And all the YouTube chefs got the right cut of meat. Unfortunately, they were cutting with the grain. And all the big YouTube chefs got this wrong. Biggie with Babish got this wrong. Natasha's Kitchen got this wrong. Chef Steps got this wrong. Freaking Sorted Food got this wrong. And yes, ya boy, not another cooking show, got this wrong. Why am I making a big deal out of it? Because I too, years ago, wanted to make a Philly cheesesteak from scratch. So I did what the YouTube chefs did and thinly sliced some ribeye with the grain, cooked it up, topped it off with cheese, sandwiched it up, bit in, and was in a world of disappointment. The sandwich, specifically the meat, was so tough and chewy, I needed teeth of solid titanium in order to chew it. Yes, the meat should be nice and firm, but not so firm where you need to use all your might just to chew down on it. This happens because, as I stated earlier, cut with the grain. And in order to tenderize it, you need to cut your meat against the grain. Because come cooking time, all the connective tissue is going to tense up. And it's going to be easier to break apart meat that's been cut against the grain than with. In fact, thinly sliced meat against the grain is how it's done in Philly. But why am I focusing in on not another cooking show? Well, let's watch his video and see what he has to say. The kinda. You see, in the original video, he used copyrighted music. And, like clockwork, the record company gone ahead and claimed his video. The city streets, both of your feet, they're all emphatically mine. Since I do not want that happening to me, I'm going to dub over the original video with royalty-free video game music and text-to-speech. Okay, now I can show you the clip. I've never made a Philly cheesesteak at home, but I'm not from Philly and I think I maybe had one Philly cheesesteak in my life and it wasn't great. One. You never made a Philly cheesesteak. Two. You're not from Philadelphia. Three, any cheesesteak you did have that one time was terrible. And four, you said in the subtitles you never been to any of the famous cheesesteak places in Philadelphia. I'll admit, I'm no Gordon Ramsay, but if I'm going to replicate a specific style of dish, I have to be familiar with it and actually eat at the restaurant that made it famous in the first place. That's why, before making my lemon pepper wet video, I actually went to J.R. Cricket in Atlanta and tried their famous lemon pepper wings. I did not watch Binging with Babbage's episode and say, oh yeah, I could do that. And just like Atlanta, I went to Philly, had a cheesesteak off camera. You're not gonna find it in the vlog. I seen them how they make cheesesteaks and they cut their steaks nice and thin Against the grain. Okay, rant out of the way. Let's get to the actual cooking. You're going to need about half a pound of thinly sliced ribeye. I mean, come on, I haven't even cooked it and it's already falling apart. And listen, I get it. It's not available in most grocery stores. Thankfully, the Asian grocery store chain H Mart sells a ton of these. Now, of course, they have it available in their normal packaged meat section, but they also have freezer bins full of this stuff typically used for bulgogi, which I'm currently working on a recipe. Stay tuned for that. But today, it's going to be for our Philly cheesesteak. If, if there's no Korean grocery stores in your area, don't worry. Just tell your butcher to take some ribeye and have it thinly sliced like this. Because thinly sliced ribeye against the grain, remember, is how they actually do it in Philly. Now, when you go to a Philly cheesesteak place, they chop the meat up as it cooks on their big-ass griddle. 
but as you'll soon see, I'm not working with huge amounts of real estate, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pre-chop our meat. Now before we begin cooking, let's make a few preparations. Grab yourself a hoagie bun and cut it open clamshell style like this. Oh, and here's a tip. Hollow out some of the inner bread like this so we can have more room for our meat. So grab yourself a medium sized pan like this, set it over medium high heat. All right, once it heats up a bit, toss in a little bit of oil. Okay, once that heats up, add our steak as well as half a cup of diced onions. Keep turning, make sure all of the steak is cooked as well as our onions. Okay, I'm no longer seeing any pink or red. Time to move on to the next step. Try to form it into a log like this. It's gonna make loading it into our hoagie bun a lot more easier. Next, place on some provolone cheese. Slap a lid on it. Give it a good moment for the cheese to melt. Take the hoagie bun, slap it down on our meat, scoop it up. Oh, and if you're not ready to eat it, just wrap it up in foil and let the flavors get to know each other. Okay, man, that's hotter than you think. And here we go, folks. A nice, lovely Philly cheesesteak any Philly local will gladly chow down on. Of course, the only way to wash this down with is with a nice glass of water. Ah, got my Philly accent down. This has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and meaning at this time. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, smash the like button. If you really like the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Thursday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram and support me on Patreon. And I think I left it too long in the foil, the bread's getting all soggy.